Hi, this is a follow-up video to the one I did recently on Ethernet triggering decoding. I've decided this might potentially be a useful product, so I've done a few revisions to the board and I've made a few to see if it sells. If it does, I'll probably redesign it to fit, fit a little case, but for now it's just a sort of single board product. I'll just go through the, um, the features. We've got a dual port RJ45 connector. This is connected just as a simple pass-through, so yeah, the input and the output are connected together and there's a switch so you can select you know, which of the two pairs that you want to monitor because of the automatic negotiation stuff it can be f difficult to figure out which pairs are actually running in which direction so you typically just flick, you know, flick the switch and look at the packet contents to figure out which way um, you're monitoring uh, that that should stay the same you know once the link's been set up um, i don't know enough about the negotiation process to know if that's going to be consistent for example over a power cycle whether it depends on which order the uh, the two ends are powered up you've also got a second switch which connects the tx pair of the um, ethernet phi and the reason for that is that if you're just connecting this to a single device for example if you want to look at just broadcast traffic or if you're connecting it to a switch with a, a managed switch you can actually set it to mirror traffic out of a port so you can actually monitor one port and spit that traffic out of another port in order for the port to recognize that, that something is plugged into it it needs to see the transmit pair connected um, that's what this function is for so you can just have this talking to a single port and it'll establish the link correctly this is based on the microchip stroke micro ksz 8061 rnd chip one of the reasons for choosing this chip is that it has switch selectable onboard termination so in a passive tap type arrangement you want to dis disable the termination to reduce the loading in practice it often works with it enabled but i've seen occasions where it doesn't particularly if you want to mon monitor traffic separately in both directions and actually use two of these then you do need to disable termination at least one of them when you're connected just just directly to a switch port you tend to want to have the the termination enabled again for a short cable it tends to work without but you know ideally you want it enabled. there's a reset button just to reset the um the phi so if the link gets into a weird state I've, i'm not totally sure how useful that is but it seemed like it might be a useful um, thing sometimes particularly you know, if you're in a debugging type situation things might get into a weird state so that's just a quick way of resetting it powers through a usb micro a draws about 100 milliamps that would normally be connected to the scopes front panel usb connector but obviously you can use a separate usb power supply there is actually a footprint on there for a full size b um, just for example if this snaps off or you just don't like the micro format you could replace it we've got indications here we've got power link link on off so for example if i um, just unplug it the link, link disappears that's just the uh, link indication from the the fire chip there's also this is the active lead from the fire chip which isn't actually all that useful because although it blinks when the packet appears the length of the blink and the timing is fairly detached from the actual packet timing obviously it's pulse stretching to make it more visible so there's actually an additional packet lead which flashes once every time a packet is received with a fixed length flash so that gives you a more accurate um, indication so this one is probably not actually useful and probably actually actively distracting there's an error lead which reflects the state of the error output of the phi um, so for example if you've got marginal condi marginal receive condition you'll tend to see that flashing briefly for example if i just switch the um the line that i'm monitoring you'll see that flash briefly as it um gets confused by the um the lines being switched over um output is via a 20 way idc header as i see eight data lines you've got a trigger out and also a marker output uh, for convenience here i'm using one of these long pin headers just to connect all the um, probes to because it's quite fiddly connecting and disconnecting these so this just allows you to unplug them all in one go and swap it between uh, different devices um, there's a whole all, all this line is ground because you do need fairly good grounding because it's sort of 12 and a half megahertz parallel data stream so you need to connect a good proportion of the grounds on the probes otherwise you tend to get glitches it, it doesn't actually affect the decoding too much because you tend to get a glitch on the transition but the actual data itself usually still still um, looks okay and there's four switches here for selecting a few options so there's one switch to select whether the termination is enabled the last one is just for jtag programming of the fpga and i'll show you the scope view to um, show you what the others do so this is the um, output we've got the trigger output here the marker outputs the bus display and these are the actual individual output lines at the start of the packet the bottom two bits are also used to provide optional triggering if you if you're short of channels for example you've only got an eight channel mso what it does is when it detects carrier it sets d0 and then at the start of the packet when it detects the uh, frame start sequence it sets d1 and then from then on you get the actual packet data so you can actually use this for triggering to avoid the need for an external trigger 
obviously there are some limitations there because obviously these data lines are bouncing up and down during the packet so you'll need to set a hold off to avoid false triggering um, if you've got like quite a high packet rate if, you, if, you, if the packets aren't coming in very fast then it's not an issue but obviously you could potentially re-trigger on these the trigger output there's a dedicated trigger output the way starts at the beginning of the packet so this is the first this this a zero this is the first byte of the destination mac address and if you look at the overall packet that that stays valid throughout the packet and then we've got the last four bytes which is the uh, packet crc then it uh, deserts after that and the sec second trace of the marker, there's two options for the marker. The first is a simple pulse per byte. And this could be used, for example, with a logic state analyzer to provide a clock signal. Uh, there's also another mode, which is switch, switch selectable, which it's used to highlight certain fields within the Ethernet packet. So in this mode, it's highlighting sort of six bytes of sort of, um, destination MAC address, source MAC address, ether type, stroke length, depending on the protocol. And there's some other markers for I, specific, specifically for IP packets. So we've got a, um, a packet type, so that's 11 hex, which is UDP. We've got source and destination um, IP addresses, source and destination port numbers, uh, length, and then it goes high for the remainder of the uh, the payload. So these are UDP packets. So this is the first byte of the uh, the payload of the UDP packet. And the other the other function for helping identify where, where you're on the packet is the first switch. If you flick the first switch, then instead of the actual packet data, it shows just a count. So it's yeah, byte zero, one, two, three, four within the packet. So for example, if you're interested in a specific um, byte within that packet, you can say zoom and use this mode to position it. So for example, if you're interested in location two, two, you could perhaps sort of you could say move it to there you've got the 2 2 there you can maybe then say set up, set up a cursor to mark that and then you can then switch back over to the the um the packet data to see the um, data in that position and in this mode the marker gives you um, bit eight just to show you if you've got a long packet it just shows you where you are so that's that each of those that's 256 bytes for um, the longer packets there's a few extra pads on the board for example there's, there's some pads here that let you get access to the the two ethernet lines for example you could put a header there if you wanted to look at those there's a header for direct access to the phi um, you have access for example to the tx pin so um, if you're maybe developing um, an ethernet mac or an fpga or something you can actually access those lines directly and there's a jtag header for uh, reprogramming the fpga so i've set up a website for this etherdecode.com i do have a few available now so I'm going to see how this goes. If it looks popular, I'll probably redesign it to go in a case. If it's sort of fairly slow, I might just make a few more. And then as and when I finish the current run of PCBs, I might just sort of open source it or whatever and let people do, do their own thing. We'll just have to wait and see. Other possible future developments, obviously Gigabit Ethernet is another possibility. I actually bought a, um, a Gigabit Ethernet Phi evaluation board to have a play with. One issue with that though is that the data will be coming out at 125 megahertz. So you need a fairly fast scope to actually be able to um, use the decoding sensibly and one possibility might be to have an option for a FIFO in there so you could actually spit the data out more slowly for slower scopes and you can maybe have switch select over a few rates obviously that would be have some limitations in terms of how much FIFO memory will be available it would be limited to whatever whatever is in the FPGA that I decided to use for that you'd be able to detect but you could still have real-time trigger and also an indication that it has overflowed if it does over overflow so again if there's serious interest i might investigate that and see see how this goes first obviously if you want to decode gig ethernet you know you can just use a gig, gig ethernet switch in the um port mirroring mode to get 100 meg out so that will give you a lot of that functionality the only thing it wouldn't give you is the, the, the sort of precise timing of packet so for example if you wanted to measure the um, the turnaround time of a switch or so on then it wouldn't be as useful for that but uh, i'm going to just see how it goes and um, instead of doing any significant amount of market research I'm just going to say build it and see what happens.